And now we smoothly swim towards uh, the two selected talks from the abstracts. And when I, when I say that we smoothly swim, it's really literary because now we are going to have a talk about zebrafish as a model organism. Our speaker is Savani Anbalagan from the Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology of Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. And he is going to tell us something about neurovascular morphogenesis uh, using the zebrafish as a model. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks a lot for the, the organizers for selecting my abstract for this uh, talk today. And uh, <coughs> uh, f the first thing is the acknowledgement. So the, the, this work was led by a, a master thesis in bioinformatics student, Miwos Wotkowski, and in collaboration with uh, assistant professor Andrzej Jelajinski. And uh, Another important person in my career is my, my postdoctor and mentor, Gil. Uh, uh, without him, I would not be working on, on, on ligands and receptors at all. And a special uh, uh, acknowledgement also to our lab tech, Emilia Wysotska, who was uh, very instrumental for me uh, uh, to establish our lab here in, in Adam Mickiewicz University. Uh, and also my mentors, who showed the right dose at the right time of my, my career. So without them, I will not be standing here. Uh, you know, we are close to Christmas. So I, I first start with the book of Genesis. As you can see here, uh, by the, the painting of Michelangelo, where he's showing the, the creation of Adam, his interpretation of creation of Adam. And I, I, I point your attention to here, where the God is uh, giving the spark of life to and creating Adam. Of course, you could ask why God is a man and, and why first he decided to, to create Adam, right? Those questions are for debate. But uh, look at these hands, right? So it's, it's this, for a cell, it's something similar. It's called cellular communication. At any given time, uh, there are some hundreds of ligands and receptors that are being expressed in, in human cells. And they communicate using several hundreds of, of pathways. They talk to each other. So these are, you know, ligand receptor mediated uh, cellular communication pathways. And so, we, any, any organism that you, you, you will choose, there'll be always ligands and receptors. Uh, Okay, uh, be it C. elegans, be it uh, E. coli, be it uh, zebrafish, be it humans and mice, yeah? uh, mating in yeast, mating in C. elegans, uh, mating in zebrafish and uh, egg laying, everything is, is because of ligands and receptors. Uh, if, you, if you take a, a fish, zebrafish mutant that lacks a FSHR, a follicular stimulating hormone receptor, and you, you cut open the, uh, you see the ovary and they, they will not be, the ovary will be uh, not formed properly. And uh, these females will not have any offsprings. So again, uh, uh, one receptor mutant, okay. So our group, we try to understand uh, the, the, the role of ligands and receptors in neurohypothesis. Uh, posterior pituitary gland. It's not, it's not really gland. Uh, so, the two major neuropeptides that are being released from this tissue, uh, oxytocin and, and vasopressin, these are nonapeptides, nine amino acid cyclic peptides, uh, bound together by one uh, uh, disulfide bond. And originally, uh, uh, they were found by, by um, uh, Henry Dale, where he was uh, uh, subjecting uh, uh, animal uterines, uh, extra, uh, 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 dissections using the extracts of neurohypothesis, and he found that uh, these these uterine tissues will, will will show uterine contractions and relaxation. That was you know Henry Dale, 19, 1906. and then later uh, they eventually synthesized these this uh, synthetic oxytocin, and then came human patients in in maternity wards in hospitals, pregnant women in hospitals uh, uh, inserted with some sort of uh, 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 um, electrodes to, to measure their uh, uterine contractions. You see here, nine women who were effect favoring delivery, three women effect adverse to delivery. And that is 1950. Synthetic oxytocin. Clinical trials, yeah? Any case, I really don't wish to be a, a woman in that position. <laughs> uh, the thing is, if you look at Western literature and we think this is the entire story of the function of neurohypothesis, I think we are all wrong. 
because there's just one side of the story, the story that is published in PubMed, okay? There are these, these indigenous uh, uh, African plants, and the extract from these plants, it can also induce uterine contractions. It just was not published. It's called as Calata Calata, Olandala officinalis. And for several, probably several, several hundreds of years, even, even before there was a Department of Embryology or Maternity Ward in, 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 in such institutions, the Africans already know how to induce labor. And that is this uh, cyclic, uh, cyclic peptides. So, so uh, next time when I, you know, I, I, have, a, I have a daughter and a son uh, into Polish, I, and I read to her the Muzinek Bambo poem. She asked me who is Muzinek Bambo, and I say, you know who is Muzinek Bambo? His great great grandparents already know how to induce uterine contractions. Okay, that is Muzinek Bambo. Any case, uh, if you want to read more about the story, I, I just made a new link: tinyurl.com mbambo. Okay, you could read more about these the cyclic neuropeptides uh, in, in African uh, indigenous medicines. So, any case, the, the, the studying neurohypothesis can help understand the beauty of life, which is birth. Okay. So we study we, uh, using zebrafish. It's a vertebrate model organism, and. Uh, the, the you know, I focus has multiple cell types, but the three major the cell types is these glial pituitides, these endothelia, and these, these axonal projections that arrive into the neural hypothesis. And so what we are asking is, what can be these ligands and receptors that, that, that lead to the proper formation of neural hypothesis using zebrafish as a, a model organism? And so uh, back in 2016, uh, this is, uh, with the help of a bioinformatician at the Weizmann Institute, we made something like this. We didn't have, uh, at that time, I think we didn't have any of these RNA-seq data and so on, so I was data mining using mouse neurohypothesis, rat neurohypothesis data, hypothalamus data, and I made some, something, a map like this. And of course, we had a hypothesis for these three ligands, and we published, okay? We showed that these three genes, VGF or TGF or, or this robust slit, they are important for the proper formation of this uh, neurovascular interface. Uh, that is 2016. The publication was in 2018 and 19. Uh, the thing is, uh, our understanding of these, of, 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 of neurohypothesis development is limited by the tools that we use. Okay, this, uh, if today in 20, Last year, if, if we need to make similar uh, uh, analysis on many different zebrafish data, we are, as a zebrafish researcher, we are being forced to use tools that were not built for zebrafish, that was built by mammalian researchers for mammalian uh, proteins, ligands, and receptors, but not for us. Uh, see, at least there is a drosophila one for, so think about all the other model organisms, uh, people who work on other model organisms, they don't have such tools. And we were also one of them. We didn't have a tool. Uh, the problem is, uh, if, we, if, if we will use these tools, of course we will be able to see what are all the genes that are in this, that are common with, with humans and, and, and mice. But we are, we'll be ignoring the, the genes that are only in zebrafish, which are, don't have any orthologs in, in humans or mice. Uh, if somebody says that they are interested in to, to study zebrafish regeneration, then they are only looking at the genes which are in humans and mice, but not in zebrafish. Are you really trying to understand zebrafish regeneration? Maybe it is some of the, the, the genes that are in zebrafish that make them more pro-regeneration. In any case, so the, 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 the point is the tools built for mammalian ligand receptor analysis are, are not ideal for, for uh, researchers like us. So, you know what? We decided, let's build one. Let's build one for zebrafish. And that's what we did with the help of Mivosh and Anjai. So we, we made a new tool from scratch. It's, it's, uh, it's published, it's uh, in the GitHub called as Dania Talk, it's open source. Any, anybody who has some basic uh, uh, coding skills can, can use it, apply it. The heart of this tool lies 
in a machine learning algorithm called as Deep Block 2 that is uh, published by a Danish group. So this, this machine learning algorithm has been trained on several thousands of proteins and their cellular localization data, where a protein can localize. So just with this tool, now you can give any protein sequence, it will predict whether the, the protein will go to the plasma membrane, to the nucleus, to the ER, to the mitochondria, etc. If you know where a protein is localized, then maybe you could sort of guess, okay, this protein, maybe it, it acts as a receptor, or maybe it is acting as a ligand. That's what we did. We, we, we predicted the entire zebrafish proteome using this deep lock, and we, we sort, of, uh, sort of guessed where and all a protein can go in a cell. And once we had this list, then we sort of uh, curated a list of potential zebrafish ligands and receptors. And uh, so many of them conserved. Some of them are not, but uh, please, this is a sort of incomplete uh, data because this is depending on the database that we use to find orthologs. So that database is, is not uh, complete. So I expect there will be more, more genes that are conserved uh, with, with, uh, with humans. The thing is, as I told you before, that there are a lot of genes only in zebrafish that are not in humans. Here's a few examples. These are chemokine genes that are only in zebrafish, but not in humans. There are no orthologs in humans. Okay, ligands in zebrafish, but not in humans. Receptor in zebrafish, but not in humans. So now, uh, how, how, how should somebody go and try to find which is a ligand or which is the, the receptor for these, these proteins? So our tool can sort of guess it based on the database that we use. So here are these sort of orphan or ortholog less ligands, and we think we know which could be a potential receptor, but again, somebody should do experiments to, to prove it. We didn't do experiments. We are just sort of finding pre-published databases. We are trying to drag things and then highlighting it for people who may be interested in, in genes or proteins such as those. Uh, we also, again, zebrafish is a very, very powerful vertebrate model organism. The, the, the power of zebrafish is, is also in the uh, use of it in, in drug screens. And so we... And so, and, and, uh, because it's conserved, so you, you could model it uh, to study many, many different human diseases and, and disorders. And so, uh, here is just a, a small list of uh, diseases that can be potentially studied using zebrafish, uh, autism, schizophrenia, uh, diabetes, uh, many, many syndromes, human syndromes, yeah. Uh, as, I saw, as I said earlier, uh, you, could, you could use drug screens and for people who have money, they have this uh, Kyogen Ingenuity Pathway Analysis. You put your data, and then it will tell you which drugs you can use it. Uh, but so we just decided to make an open source one for zebrafish researchers. We, we took the, the Drug Central database. The, it has all the drugs that are approved that can target human proteins, and we found those orthologs, and we think um, there are some, some thousand, thousands of receptor targeting drugs that are available in humans that can be also used in, in zebrafish, and we, we give it all. If you use our tool, it will just, it will just list everything out, the same way as a, as a Kyogen Ingenuity Pathway Analysis tool. Finally, it's, it's the Interactome, so we use the, the string database. It has a lot of uh, physical in, uh, protein interaction, also interlog uh, uh, protein interactions, and we came up with this. We also, to, to satisfy the reviewer's uh, uh, needs, we also integrated all the existing human uh, ligand receptor databases. So what we now give is this 4,000 new ligand receptor pairs, which previously did not exist. So if, if zebrafish receptors before, they'll be only looking at the sort of these human ligand receptor pairs, but now we, we say to them, hey, there are, there are another 4,000 more, which maybe is of interest to you. This is all fine. Uh, I told you that in the beginning, I'm interested in neurohypothesis. So now we could, we could take every single available single cell data. Now we already have zebrafish single cell data of hypothalamus, neurohypothesis, and so on. And here is a map what we made. So these are all the potential ligand receptor interactions that may happen in the neurohypothesis. Some of them we already published, this uh, SLIT3 robot 2, but now we know the story is a bit more complex because of the existence of the single cell data, because SLIT3 is not only in the glia, but SLIT3 is also in the neurons. So, so it just complicates things. 
This is all fine, so, so we made a tool, but so what? So what? Okay. Uh, to answer this, I will, I will start with this, you know, there's this, uh, the little prince, again, I read to my daughter, and they, it's, it's, it's only with the heart one can see rightly what is essential is, 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 not in, is, is invisible to the eye, right? By, so uh, here is zebrafish heart, embryonic heart, okay? And here is a single cell data of zebrafish heart, embryonic heart, okay? I see the single cell data, but I don't see, I don't see, I don't see, it's, it's just for me data, it's just cells and a lot and lot of single cell data. But for me, it's, it's, it's nice information, you could publish in Cell and Nature of such uh, uh, data, but so what? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just rewriting here. It is only with Daniel talk that can one see rightly. From this single cell data, we go to something like that, okay? And this is a preprint of this, uh, uh, from Professor, um, Dr. Cecilia Minata group in, in IMCB Warsaw. So I guess, so th I thank the organizers again for this opportunity. I thank you for staying for so late and to listening to my talk. Uh, I, 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 I invite you, if you, next time you're applying for your animal ethics application, please, uh, you may be interested to check out my, my uh, a new sort of a, a practice and policy manuscript where I argue that we still need animal research to, 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 for research in drug safety studies and understanding civilizational diseases. So thank you, thank you very much.